So, I just got back from six days in the Catskills, stayed in Roscoe, New York, and at the Beaver Kill Campground, and oh wow, what a trip. I was able to fish a handful of rivers in the southern area, mostly the Beaver Kill and the Willoweemock, but also made some short trips out to Calicoon Creek and the Never Sink in the east and west branches of the Delaware. Now, I could probably call this the trip of a lifetime, but I'm not going to because I hope to go out there several more times in the rest of my lifetime. Now, in preparing for this trip, I did a fair amount of research online and through several of my books, but the one of them that I kept coming back to was Mike Vallis Tying Catskill Style Dry Flies. 234 pages. This book really is one of a kind. The first 80 pages are really a background and history of the area from some of the famous fisheries and their pools and stretches to a lot of the early tires and their histories. He talks about tires like Theodore Gordon, Roy Steenrod, Rube Cross, then you've got the Deddies and Darbies, and Art Flick, really some of the legends of our sport. Then he's got a great chapter on hackle, what makes a good quality hackle, how to select it, and how chickens were used and still are used for growing good hackle. Then he's got a brief chapter on tools and materials, which really isn't a primer on how we would select our tools today. It's more of a history on the tools and, and vices that some of these early Catskill fly tires used. Now, before he gets into the flies, there is one chapter on how to tie dry fly wings. And this chapter in itself pretty much makes the book worth the price. But there's so much more to it. The next 11 chapters are detailed tying instructions on some of the most classic Catskill style dry flies. And in true Mike Valla style, these instructions are absolutely thorough. And they really are the 11 flies that if you are interested in this style of dry fly, you really want to know. He starts it off with the Quill Gordon, and how could you start it with anything but Theodore Gordon's masterpiece? Then there's the Red Quill, the March Brown, the Light Cahill. Then he talks about some of the more unique patterns with their origins in the Catskills. Flies like Tups Indispensable, the Brown Bivisible, and the Quack. That's really a fun one to tie. And finally, he wraps it up with kind of what's a state of the region today, the conditions of some of the fisheries, and then some profiles of current Catskill tires. So with all that being said, who is this book for? Well, I'm going to say it is certainly for any tire interested in classic American dry flies, but also anyone interested in the history of the Catskill region. Now, one caveat, if you are a brand new fly tire looking to get your first book, I would say this is probably not the book for you. I mean, a big section of it is how to, but Catskill style dry flies are not the easiest patterns to tie and they do take a fair amount of practice. But if any of what I just talked about resonates with you, this book, available today in paperback for about $30, is worth every penny. In fact, there are only a few books that I keep multiple copies of, so I've always got one close at hand. That's Mary Orvis Marbury's Favorite Flies, Dave Hughes' Essential Trout Flies, and this one, Mike Vallis' Catskill Style Dry Flies. Now, I did pick up an extra copy of this one for the review, so let's give it away. If you're interested in this, just leave a comment. Anywhere in your comment, use the word Catskill, C-A-T-S-K-I-L-L. -L. Today is Sunday, July 10th, 2022. I'll let it run for a few days and Wednesday evening, that'll be July 13th. I'll go to the random comment picker and select a comment that uses the word Catskill and I'll get a copy of the book in the mail to you. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. See you in a couple of days.